Donald Trump declared he is officially running for president again. Trump promised to return America to those golden days of three years ago when we had one million COVID hospitalizations and the entire country was in lockdown. I'm still, I'm nostalgic for that golden era. Now, Donald Trump has a problem. See, part of his charm, his allure, is he's a bully. And his followers love how he picks on people because he says the things his acolytes are too frightened to say. He picks on the weak, the frightened. You know, like Dave Chappelle's monologue on Saturday night. This could end up being a significant problem for Donald Trump. Here he is making fun of Biden for being old, doddering, and he's getting laughs. Our enemies are speaking of us with scorn and laughter and derision. Now we have a president who falls asleep at global conferences. <laughs> he said thank you to the wrong country for inviting him to a major summit on the environment of all things. He calls the country a name that was actually a country on another continent. <laughs> so that was his declaration speech, right? Mar-a-Lago this week, making fun of Biden for being old and senescent. This is funny and powerful, and it's effective portraying Joe Biden as disoriented and forgetful, or as I call that, Reagan-esque. Here's the problem for the 76-year-old Donald Trump. He himself is no spring chicken hawk becomes president there will never be a war within weeks okay i played the wrong clip uh so let me try, try that again uh so he was talking about in his declaration at mar-a-lago this week he was talking about how the naysayers back in 2016 warned this there will never be a war within weeks okay there will never be a war within weeks Right? Pay, pay attention to this. There will never be a war within weeks. What he meant to say is there will immediately be a war in weeks. He, he misspoke. He meant to say there would be, there would be a war within weeks. And instead, he said there will never be a war. Okay? That's okay, but not in the same speech where you're bullying Joe Biden for the same infir infirmities that... Uh, you know, that you're suffering from. In Trump's speech, he complained that his opponents warned that he was a warmonger who would send this country off to war the second he was president. And we will have wars like you've never seen before. It will happen immediately. Well, we did have wars like we've never seen before, and they did happen immediately, just not overseas. The war started right here in America because of... Donald Trump constantly warning about the enemy within. Donald Trump made it okay to hate Arabs, Muslims, blacks, Jews, women, the LGBTQ community, the transgender community. Donald Trump declared open warfare on anyone who wasn't a white male heterosexual Christian nationalist. That's what America first is all about. This dates back to the 30s, the isolationists, Charles Lindbergh, the America firsters who didn't want to go to war with Germany. This is what isolationism is all about. Don't fight overseas, fight the enemy within. At least that's where it always starts. America first means let's deal with Americans first. Cull the un-American before we start destroying lives overseas. Back to Trump's bullying problem. Like I said, he's going to run on Joe Biden, Biden's cognitive decline, but he's going to have trouble doing that because Trump is showing his age as well. Here he is once again trying to prove his Charles Lindbergh isolationist's bona fides. And yet I've gone decades decades without a war, the first president to do it for that long a period. Trump said he went decades, decades without a war. And yet I've gone decades, 
decades without a war, the first president to do it for that long a period. That makes absolutely no sense. How could he go decades, decades without a war? He was only president for four years. How could he have gone decades without a war? Unless, unless by decades without a war, he meant dodging the Vietnam draft. Maybe that's what he meant. Trump gave the speech from Mar-a-Lago, surrounded by hundreds of simpletons jockeying for access to him, trying to get into his inner circle because they're too stupid to imagine the six-figure legal bills awaiting them after he lets them in. When you work for Trump, you're going before a grand jury. You're going to be indicted. Ask Alan Weisselberg, possibly prison. And yet, and yet, there are still people willing to get close to him right now. His daughter, Ivanka, this week officially announced that she's having nothing to do with her father's run for president. But you know who's back with Donald Trump this week? Steve Bannon, Roger Stone. They've, they've bad-mouthed him for years, but they're back with him. And why do they want him to be president again? Because they need more pardons. That's the only way Donald Trump gets people to stay with him. You work for Trump once, you get indicted, you rack up legal fees, you get convicted, then he pardons you. But not for future crimes. These people are habitual felons. People like Roger Stone, people like Steve Bannon. These are habitual felons. They can't help themselves. So even though they hate Trump, they need him to be president again for another pardon. That's how he pays his campaign staff, basically. Instead of money, it's the promise of a pardon. Most of the people closest to Donald Trump right now are pardons waiting to happen.